Hello, good morning friends. Welcome to the CEC Educet live lecture. In our previous lecture yesterday, we talked a lot about uh, what is communication and how marketing communication is slightly, slightly different from communication. Our expert told us uh, how, how communication only relates to understanding but marketing communication is all about understanding and uh, attempting for actions. Further, we talked about uh, a new concept that is integrated marketing communication, the various tools of integrated marketing communication. From now on, that means from today's lecture onwards, uh, I mean in this lecture only, we are going to talk about how marketing communication works in the servicing uh, services uh, sector. And uh, for this, we have again with us in our studio, Dr. Ravi Shankar. He is professor in IIFT and uh, he has been teaching there since 1999. He has been author of a number of books and uh, through his knowledge, uh, I feel, I believe uh, you will be benefited through this very lecture and uh, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Ravi Shankar. Dr. Shankar, you are wholeheartedly welcome in our EDUSET lecture. Thank you very much. <coughs> very good morning to everybody and uh, we carry on our uh, discussions from the point we left uh, yesterday. To begin with, uh, I would just like to uh, summarize what we were discussing. We were discussing the integrated marketing communication in the context of uh, businesses and that can also be applicable for social issues. And I started the, the, the lecture yesterday by giving the example of a family planning program. Uh, subsequently, I did mention that uh, it, we talk about integrated marketing communication, that there are various tools which are available to a particular company, like advertising, like sales promotions, could be direct marketing program, could be internet, could be websites, could be other methods of reaching out to the people, could be personal selling. But you need to develop a strategic view on each because each of those elements have certain advantages and disadvantages. In yesterday's session, we discussed the advantages and disadvantages of large number of integrated marketing communication tools which are generally been used in business like advertising, like sale promotion, like direct marketing, and so on. Uh, today, we will start with the specific example, and the example uh, will uh, further reinforce the point which I, I wanted to make. Uh, if we look at the monitor, there is a small case study I'm going to present about Shield Antiseptic Cream, a company, actually SK and F, was ma manufacturing nitrofurazone ointment which is brought bought by the hospitals in bulk for treatment of burns, bruises and cuts. If you visit any government hospital, they apply for anything such thing, whether it is a burn or it is a cut or it is a bruise, they apply the same ointment and that ointment is actually this nitrofurazone ointment. The results were fantastic. This medicine really works on any open wound on the skin. So nitrofurosin cream under the furosin is marketed as an ethical product that is against doctor prescription. And furosin is market leader amongst the antiseptics in the ethical segment. And this company, SKNF, decided to market the third product identified uh, uh, furosin as an OTC, over the counter. O OTC medicines are those medicines for which no prescriptions is required. Like when you go to and ask for Bernal, you just get it. So uh, they wanted to market it as an OTC medicine and uh, they gave the name Shield Antiseptic Cream. The step taken for the launch of the product were the brand name was researched uh, through a focus group discussion and the name was confirmed that yes, it's a good name it shields, it protects your open wound against infection and so on and it helps in healing. The advertising campaign was formulated 
and through effective uh, pre-testing and so on. The three advertisements were tested and the results were very good. It is only about one advertisement the feedback was poor. So that was re-thought of and modified. And when it was retested, uh, the, the modified campaign, the results were more than 70 percent uh, and then that is how it was executed, uh, 71 percent. And the third campaign was modified and that is where I said it is 70 percent. The product was launched through chemists and departmental stores in metros and mini metros. The company spent some amount uh, like that, but the product failed. A good product, a good campaign, it failed. And that is the point I wanted to bring home that many a times what you think is so easy, it is not all that easy. People, they do not just buy the product looking at an adver advertisement. And what company really did subsequently, they realized that PBU, they did not allow the consumers to try out the product. Most of us would like to take a sample first. Only then we start trusting that the product is good. So subsequently when the product failed in the market, their sales continued to be low irrespective of a wonderful recall of the campaign. The research revealed that 70 percent of the target audience were able to recall the brand, but they were not buying it. So it was on communication the campaign was good, but on marketing communication it was a failure. People were not buying the product. Subsequently, company thought it is a good strategy rather than spending so much of money on advertising. They should actually give samples to the people and they identified the ones who are more prone to cuts, bruises and so on are children. So they started distributing small tubes of 10 gram, 5 gram in the schools and any time the children got a cut or a bruise or any such thing, they told the parents that humko school mein bataya ye wali cream lagani hai. And they insisted on the parents to apply that cream and they pulled out that small tube from their bags. Parents saw that this cream works wonderfully well. The wound starts healing faster than otherwise and the cream started becoming popular. This is something I wanted to bring home. Many a times advertising does not work. And therefore, you have to think about integrated marketing communication. What that small tube of sample did, advertising could not do it for you. And that is somewhere we have to realize that an integrated marketing communication campaign has to be worked out. I give you another example. And the other example is when the growth on television started, the reading habits started going down. People stopped reading magazines. And a lot of magazines became victims of growth in television. It's very, it was a very interesting phenomenon. On one hand, television was growing. On the other hand, another product category, which is print media, was suffering. There is no competition otherwise on face. On the face value, there is no competition between television and magazines. But actually, that was what's happening. After all, I as a person, how much time I will have to read or watch television? So you are actually competing against that free time of a per particular person. And a lot of magazines like Saptaik Hindustan, Dharam Yog, Illustrated Weekly, uh, Shankar's Weekly, uh, Mukta, Sarita, they all became victim of, victims of growth in television. And at that time, a particular magazine called Famina, Famina, they came out with Miss India contest. And Famina Miss India contest gave tremendous, tremendous mileage to the brand and the magazine is still there. It has become a premier magazine amongst the women segment. And here I gave you the other example of like look running out, doing contest, even contest uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a part of integrated marketing communication. No amount of advertising could have helped than Miss India contest. So is the case with when you have Lakme uh, Fashion Week or Will's Lifestyle Week and they, when the best of the best celebrities, they walk on the ramp, they add more value to the brand than advertising. So friends, start thinking in terms of integrated marketing communication and not purely, purely advertising. Ek vigyapan nahi lagana, but think in terms of an integrated approach to marketing communication. It could be a pamphlet can do wonders for you 
than advertising. It could be a free sample can do wonders for you than advertising. And that is what I want to say that start thinking in terms of integrated marketing communication. You as students of management, I would give another example and then go on with my, 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 my presentation on this topic. When you close your eyes and ask this question, which is the best business school in the world? Most people say Harvard. We, most of us, we have not even imagined, we have not even gone to the website of Harvard University. We have not even uh, have any imagination of what kind of campus they have. We have not even tried to look at the, go to the Google images and see the image of uh, campus of Harvard Business School. But most of the people, they think that the best school in the world is Harvard Business School. And how Harvard is able to reach out to those impressions in your mind. You were definitely not born with those impressions. You acquired those impressions as you grew. And how a business school they realize that their credibility is in their journal. That Harvard Business Review is their communication tool. The credibility of the business school is in the credibility of the journal. If the credibility of the journal goes up, the credibility of the business school will also go up. And that is where they looked at uh, integrated marketing communication far more professionally than just advertising or doing samples. But they looked at integrated marketing communication and what communicated those impressions uh, in the minds of thousands of MBA aspirants and MBA students across the globe is the journal. And they put all their energies in maintaining the quality of that journal. So friends, uh, this is what we would like to talk about, integrated marketing communication. And yesterday, I concluded on this note, and I pick up the thread from this point from where I left yesterday, that you identify your target audiences, determine the communication objective, design the message, choose the media, and select the, me the message source and so on. And actually, what you have to think of, you have to think of these five aspects. What will be said, how it will be said, when you will say, where you will say, and who will say what you want to say. I think in communication, marketing communication, these are the five different, uh, you know, we always call it five W's and one H. Well, I am talking about four W's and one H in communication. And that holds true for, for if you have to be a winner, start thinking of uh, uh, marketing communication in, in the services sector more particularly, where we talk about create tangible, memorable images. You have to create imageries of, of the service because service is intangible. Some of the courier companies which are globally successful like DHL or, or uh, FedEx, they show you the aircrafts, they show you Mercedes-Benz trucks in their advertisements. You may not have seen the, those aircrafts in India, they, you may not have seen those trucks in India, but they, DHL does operate in India, FedEx do operate from India, and they create those impressions through those visuals. And if it is speed post, uh, you know it, what kind of trucks they have in their fleet and they are unable to give those tangible clues, memorable clues through the trucks which they use. The second uh, uh, objective of uh, you know uh, marketing communication and education in the services sector is build awareness, interest and stimulate trial. There is a model of communication which is called IDA model awareness, interest, desire, and action. Unless you create awareness, you cannot create interest. If you create interest, only then you can create desire. And if you create desire, it is likely you may create action. And it is that model which says that build awareness, create interest, and if not a action, at least a trial. So samples can create trials for you. The third objective is teach customers what to expect and how to use a service. Many a times we don't know how to use a service. <clears throat> Let me speak of myself. Tele check-in at the airport, at least I, I was not aware of. I was taught by somebody that rather than standing in the long queue, 
I go to the self check-in kind of a machine and I can check in myself and I have to do nothing but just to press a few buttons and it is so easy. And I found I save phenomenal time and I am thankful to the person who helped me to teach. And uh, this is what we call many a times in the services sector, you have to educate people how to, to use the service. Communicate brand strengths and benefits. That is another aspect of it that you communicate the brand strengths. Management demand level compared to the competition and counter their claims. That is another objective that you have to handle your competition. It's highly competitive word. You name a service and you find there is a, there is a huge, huge competition from there. And the competition is also from not using that service. For example, you have a choice not to view this program. But if you don't view this program, you know that what you might miss. And therefore, the, the government of India thought of introducing this uh, mechanism to help you to, to have access to the superior quality of inputs for your academic learning. Provide reassurances and in some services, reassurance is very important. We call it promoting guarantee. In fact, many service organizations, they offer nothing other than just a guarantee. It could be a mutual fund which may say 13% assured return. If you invest your money in my company's uh, mutual fund, you will get 13% return. So that is where we call promoting assur assurance. Healthcare sector, again assurance that you will get treatment. Some of the business schools, they promote assurance that you get a job of so many lakhs. Airlines, assurance, on-time arrivals and departures. So many courier companies, again an assurance, and I'm actually these um, globally known courier companies, they give this assurance that any time, anywhere in the world, they will take their your consignment within 36 hours. So if you give them 36 hours time, they, they can take the consignment to any part of the world and they, get, they stand the guarantee. And ever since they started taking the guarantee, their business grew. So what they offer, they offer just a guarantee. Even a pizza company in India, they are talking about 30 minute guarantee of delivery. So many service organizations, they only offer a guarantee and nothing else. And that guarantee is a big, big deal. And the next point which I have is recognize, reward, valued customers. Uh, that is also the objective of marketing communication. Reward. Airlines, they give um, uh, frequent flyer and the frequent flyer people, they get some points and those points are nothing but kind of promotions that I get some incentives because I get certain points, I can upgrade my flight if I am traveling and so on. Reposition service relative to competition, even repositioning is also there. What is repositioning? That current positioning which you thought of has worked for you and it worked for you for all those years. But the way the business is growing, the way competition is growing, it, it might be necessary for you to reproject yourself, reposition yourself. Because so far, so good, but in the times to come, it may not work. The, business, the market has changed, the competition has changed, and you may have to reposition yourself and reduce uncertainty or the risk. So friend, these are some of the objectives. And if you, I mean, if you look at this particular frame, uh, it will reassure you that marketing communication is just not selling. Marketing communication goes beyond selling and one can communicate with variety of objectives. When we come to the services sector, we have large number of challenges. Uh, the first challenge is lack of marketing orientation. Uh, most of the service organizations, they lack marketing orientation. And the second, uh, because they are not big businesses, uh, a, a, a toilet soap company is a big company, but a, a single hospital, and which doesn't have many branches, just one hospital or a hotel, 
uh, just take for example in the city of Delhi there are so many hotels which are not part of a chain they just have a single property uh, take for example Vikram hotel in in uh, Lajpat Nagar area or Mulchand area they just have one property that's it so you cannot expect them to have a, a very extensive marketing orientation as against a toilet soap company or a detergent company and so on then professional and ethical constraints hospitals cannot really come out with uh, those kind of campaigns the way uh, a toilet soap company can do or a, a here service small scale of operation so a lot of services they have small scale of operation nature of competition and market conditions that the the they handle more workload than really they can really handle so uh, nature of the competition and the market condition limited view of promotion methods um, like for example i always give this example uh, police department for example they did not need not to advertise delhi police came out with a campaign with you for you always that perhaps is not required and that is a limited view in fact they have to spend more money on on training their staff in fact uh, one of the programs we on television which um, uh, film actor mr amir khan was anchoring called satyamev jayate he was talking about 93% of the police department uh, they have in their workforce they are actually the cops and they don't receive any training throughout their life only the 7% officers if at all they, they receive any training it's only those 7% of the officers they receive training but the 93% of people they don't receive training at all so that is where i call uh, training is nothing but communication to the employees and you communicate with your employees you train them train them to teach to to do well to perform their jobs very well i think that is a much better communication and that is where we call in the in many service organizations internal communication is far more important than external communication and more importance has to be given to the internal communication it's also being said that if internal if there is a breakdown in internal communication the entire communication can collapse the entire service can collapse so that is the importance of internal communication and to that extent the police departments of different states must be sensitive about it and uh, we continue on that and the other differences are due to the characteristics of the services the first the consumer attitude uh, is one of the characteristics typically consumer rely on subjective impressions what is subjective subjectivity versus objectivity how can you say that a restaurant is good if they have taken 10 minutes more or 5 minutes more or 3 minutes more to deliver your food rather than they so because it was busy will you call the restaurant was bad so certain amount of subjectivity is always there and then we look at two dimensions of consumer uh, attitude one is perceived as being more personal and the consumers are generally less satisfied it's also been said that in the services sector people are generally less satisfied because they don't get the ownership of the service physical goods are possessions there is ownership uh if my wife has bought certain diamond tops for example and her colleagues appreciate she will be very happy she will be very satisfied that everyone has appreciated the diamond tops which she bought the other day or a wrist watch she has bought and people appreciated it or a mobile phone or a car or a dress for that matter but services are actually not physical so there is a uh, your there is no appreciation comes from other people and that is where people remain generally less satisfied with such services and the needs and motivation of per for purchase uh, that is also uh, very different in the services sector uh and therefore i suggest that buying process is more difficult for buyer 
to evaluate quality and value in the service sector, it is likely to be influenced by others, by the word of words, by the personal influence. Therefore, in the services sector, we call there is a need to generate word of mouth. As I said earlier, if my wife buy diamond rings or diamond tops or a dress or anything, people appreciate and she get influenced by that and she feels satisfied. In the services sector, that nothing is visible. So people don't appreciate it. And therefore, for the service organization, it is necessary to generate positive word of mouth. And word of mouth is something like, uh, if you have a negative, then that spreads like a jungle fire. The fact is that the police departments, they suffer because of the negative word of mouth which has been created by the police departments, by the Indian cinema. You look at Indian movies, Bollywood movies, you will find that uh, the police department is generally shown as corrupt, they late risers, they, they come at the last minute and so on. And at, I, in my own personal analysis, uh, I find that, and when I compare it with the Bollywood movies, Bollywood movie with Hollywood movies, I don't think Hollywood movies have projected uh, American police in that negative way, the way they do it in India. And I call it that uh, they, they created the negative uh, uh, impressions about, but my personal views are that, the, that in our country the, uh, the police force is a great police force. We are reminded of the great police force when we are stuck in a traffic jam. Then we wish, yahan pe koi traffic police wala hota, to hum jaldi se yahan se chale jate. Then we are reminded of the cops at the traffic signal when the power goes away and there is a traffic jam at the, rail, at the traffic crossing. So generate, there is a need to generate positive word of mouth and I think in, 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 in the services sector that is the need. That is a need to create a word of mouth. I always call that uh, there is a, a, a call the importance of marketing communication where marketing communication can influence the perceived quality. Uh, we always call uh, if you look at the diagram, I always differentiate between technical quality and functional quality. Now technical quality means that how a particular service organization is technically superior. But there could be certain other service organizations which may not be technically superior, but they are functionally superior. And I give the example of the uh, Indian Airlines uh, way back in 1990. At that time, Indian Airlines had brand new 20 aircraft, Airbus 320s, brand new. And they were using them in the flight. Indian Airlines was not flying aircrafts in the night, from 11 in the night till 5 in the morning. Aircrafts used to remain on the ground, go to the hangars and go through the technical checks for six hours. So the technical quality of Indian Airlines was very high. But then came the private airlines, they were actually called air taxi operators, ATOs, Modilufs, Damania, East West, Sahara, Kingfisher, Jet. So most of them they had old aircrafts much older, 25 year old aircrafts, but they were, they, they were refurbished, they were giving better, um, the technical quality of these airlines was very infer much inferior. But these airlines, they, they, if you look at the upper side of the diagram, through their communication, through word of mouth, by addressing customer needs, they, they, they influence the perceived quality perceptions of the quality. The flights were flying on time, which influenced the perception. They were giving better food, that influenced the perception. They put younger um, cabin staff, irrespective of the gender. But the youth symbolizes efficiency. 
and these young boys and girls were running, really running for their life to deliver service to the passengers. And these airlines really started giving tough competition to the national carrier. And they started eroding the market share of the national carrier. And gradually these airlines started upgrading their fleet. They started growing in size. And some of them are still there and giving uh, a, a, a really tough competition to the national carrier. So I look at the three dimensions of quality. First is the technical quality, other is the functional quality, and the third is the perceived quality. You may not be able to invest in technology, but you can definitely in invest in delivery. You can improve your delivery. You can improve your communication. You can Im improve perceptions of your communication. And that is where many a times internal communication is very important. Give training to the people so that you influence the quality, perceptions of the quality. And this particular diagram which I have shown to you, it holds true irrespective of the sector you take. It will hold true. I have taken an uh, uh, actual example uh, from the Indian scene and uh, in the last 30 years, we have seen how the national carrier, the Indian Airlines or Air India, they lost the market share. So we move on further and uh, look at uh, differential advantages. And differential advantages, if you're looking at your market, obviously the differential advantage you have to give to your consumers, it could be high quality, it could be faster delivery, it could be price, low price, it could be excellent service, it could be certain unique features which others don't have. So you have to decide what kind of communication you can build in and promise what is possible. A service is all about performance. And that is where I call in the services sector, this performance cannot be changed. It is first time and the first time is the last time. Services sector is what one such sector where your services cannot be returned. If you buy a mobile phone from a company and two days later you find it has stopped working, the company can take it back and give you another. But uh, you take your relative to the hospital and the relative die, it cannot be returned. And that is where the services cannot be returned. At the first instance, this is act of performance and there has to be a perfection in the act. It is being said that many time in service organization, you must perform thinking this is the last thing, last time you are doing in your life. You will put your heart and soul into it. Many a time I go to the class thinking this is the last class I am doing in my life. And I try to put my heart and soul into the class. So service is an act of performance and there has to be perfection in that performance. There cannot be a re retake on the service. Services cannot be returned. And all service workers, whether they are working in healthcare, airlines, restaurant, educational sector, financial services, cut across, they have to think in that way. The services cannot be return and it is this all about performance. The service firm must deliver on advertising promise. Whatever they communicate, whatever they advertise, they must deliver. Domino's said 30 minutes, so they have to deliver on 30 minutes. They cannot really change it. Promise delivery is all the more crucial as labor intensiveness leads to variability in the service delivery. People are different. And it is the attitude of the person which matters. What is on time? On time is really you have to be on dot. I was quite impressed reading in the newspaper something about uh, one of the film actors, uh, Mr. Bachchan. He was running because he got stuck in a traffic jam. He got out of his car. 
because um, something about he had to attend a function and he really ran through the streets of Mumbai to reach the, the place where he had to be there. So to other person like in India, uh, to a lot of people, uh, you know, punctuality doesn't mean that kind of punctuality, that by seconds they count. Uh, <clears throat> most of us who are in uh, with long innings in academics, uh, we look at punctuality like uh, on the dot. And personally, I can speak for myself that I ensure that I am there on dot. Uh, and then it is better to promise only that what can be delivered. And in service sector, it is advised you for the God's sake, don't over promise because if you over promise, it may backfire. It will result into dissatisfaction. So avoid over promising in the services sector. So let us look at uh, promotion mix in the services sector one by one and some of the guidelines for each of these elements as we go along. As I mentioned yesterday, the promotion mix may comprise of advertising, public relations, sales promotions, personal selling, uh, 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 public relations, word of mouth, and combination of promotion tools used to reach out to the target to fulfill the organization overall goals. Actually, in the services sector, you have a whole range of things which you can use. You can use personal communication, and this is one particular slide which has everything. So I'm going to keep it for, for a while and uh, speak and introduce one by one. Like personal communication, you can be using selling. You might be using customer selling, customer service. You might be doing training, uh, training to the employees and also training your customers. And you must be managing word of mouth. Uh, that is um, uh, very important. You may be advertising in the broadcast media, print media, on the internet, outdoor, retail display, cinema theater, telemarketing, direct mailers. So you might be using a whole lot of uh, advertisements. You may also use sales promotions like samples, coupons, discounts, uh, sign up, rebates, gifts, prize promotions and so on. PR and publicity tools they use in the services sector like press release, uh, press conferences, special events, sponsorships. It's very interesting that uh, I may like to give you an example. There is a company here in India on the lines of a company in US uh, which is uh, called John Pinto and Sons. John Pinto is funeral director and they, uh, they have an office in Delhi and Mumbai. Uh, somebody who die, they take care of the last rites. The way the nuclear families are there, uh, many people, they find it very easy to approach this company and they take care of everything. Uh, I was surprised when I gave this, this company's example. I was teaching abroad and in, a, in, in Africa, I was giving this example in the class. And one lady student, she raised her hand and I allowed her to speak. She said, sir, I'm aware of this company. My mother was in tre under treatment in Bangalore in India. Unfortunately, we couldn't save her. She passed away and her body was taken to the mortuary. At the mortuary, we were given the visiting card of this particular company and they took care of my mother's body. We, they told us, you proceed back home and make the arrangements for her funeral we will send the body. We will preserve the body and send the body over to you. And we will make all the arrangements of uh, sending your mother's body faster than the fastest. And she said that we, I reached back here and within 48 hour, hours, a duly preserved body of my mother arrived at uh, the, uh, the airport. And imagine this company, they cannot advertise. You may not have seen this company's advertisements. 
But if you go to Google, type John Pinto, you will get to know what they are doing and what great work they are doing. And Mr. John Pinto himself is a, is a certified embalmist who can uh, uh, preserve the body by, the, by applying certain chemicals. They see to it the body doesn't decompose with the passage of time. And uh, they do a lot of uh, uh, good work and uh, near Kapaseda border in Delhi, they have an office. So look at this particular organization in terms of marketing communication. For them, what is communication? Just to promote their telephone number. Everybody who is distressed going through this kind of an experience of losing a loved one where the last rites have to be performed in you know it, it's 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 a process which is uh, quite painful uh, one has to go through and they extend the helping hand maybe for a money for a charge in any case for, for even you take care of it yourself you do spend end up spending money now here is an organization which which does that work and what kind of marketing communication they will be engaging themselves into so they only look at promoting uh, through uh, the mortuaries, hospitals, and just a telephone number. In uh, in US, this particular company, which I'm, uh, I don't want to talk about, but would like to give a, even a, they have gone even a step further. They have counselors in their uh, panel on their panel, and they they visit the bereaved family for at least a period of one year. They counsel the bereaved family if the bereavement is a is a is a shock, and the bereaved family finds it very difficult to to bear that shock, bear that loss. They counsel the bereaved family to learn to live without the loved one, and they help the bereaved family to start leading the normal life. To that extent, they have gone uh, for uh, so. Look at the service offer. Of a, of, a, of, a, of a company like this. And I thought of giving this example so that you break away from hotels, restaurants, banks, service organization means only this. But service organizations can be of, of a level which I just talked about. So in these organizations, PR and publicity is the most important communication tool they just cannot think of running promotions or advertising and so on. What they do only, you know, bit of event they might do, some sponsorship may do, they may do some charity uh, and so on. And that is where uh, PR comes into in, in a big way. Then they use some kind of instructional material like website, like manuals, like brochures, that video audio cassettes software and the voicemails and then some kind of corporate design in the services sector even this uh, uh, corporate identity media is also a very big thing and they can uh, help uh, in a big way like the signage uh, in fact uh, the term uh, public relation has come uh, from the church and the church has given guidelines for public relations uh, and way back, I don't know which year, but the, they thought of that the signage should be such on the building, the sign of cross should be visible around the clock, the light should fall on, the, on that sign of cross around the clock. So in the night also there should be a, um, you know, uh, an, an electrification should be done so that anybody who need any help should know where to go. Uh, uh, interior design and interior decor is also important. Even the vehicles are important. What type of vehicles you have? I gave the example of DHL, FedEx. They use Mercedes-Benz trucks, aircrafts and whatnot. Equipments are very important. Stationery is very important and uniform is also very important. What type of uniform you wear? So advertising, uh, if I look at uh, their guidelines for, for, for the uh, services sector, 
and there are five six guidelines for the services sector for advertising that it should have a positive effect on the contact people. Uh, service organization, irrespective of the service organization, the suggestion for advertising is don't use negative appeals. Life itself is miserable. Uh, generally it is being said that negative appeal should not be used. You should always use positive appeals. It should be positive, not negative. Uh, here I would like to give the example of the earlier immunization campaign. The, immunization, uh, the earlier immunization campaign was that uh, a couple was working at the construction site. So the Hadi Ke Majdur, husband, wife, that lady goes up to her husband and she says, I think that I will give the polio to the day of the day of the day of the day of the day. No, our day of the day will also be like Ramu's son's son will be like a day of the day. Now they were using the negative appeal, fear appeal and that was not giving good results. Then the, the Ministry of Health thought of changing the appeal to positive appeal and the appeal was determination and thanks to large number of uh, film celebrities who came forward and came in the campaign and the campaign became very very positive. एक बार ठान ले, मजाल है कोई हमारे बच्चों को हाथ भी लगा पाए, जीवन के दो बूंद, आने वाले शनिवार इतवार नजदीक के स्वास्थ्य केंद्र में अपने बच्चों को जरूर लेके जाएं। So that that program became highly highly successful, and actually uh, in India uh, we are able to have 100% vaccination of children against polio and so on. It's a very successful campaign. Uh, from negative to the positive appeal and that is what is being recommended. Don't think in terms of giving fear appeal. Fears ki wajay se log kaam karenge. No. You can always say the same thing in a positive way. And that is the guidelines for advertising in services sector. It should have positive effect on the contact people. It should capitalize on word of mouth. It should provide tangible clues to the customers the way if DHL etc they use their trucks, airlines use their aircrafts, the most modern, air, in fact Air India these days that they, they do advertise and they capitalize on the new aircraft they have which is the best aircrafts in the world, the Dreamliners, the Boeing 787. It should mark the service offer, make the service offer easily understood. So that is another dimension of it that convey something in a very simple word, words, so that is the, that, so that people can understand it in very simple language. It should contribute to continuity of the communication that you may not run the same campaign time and again you might change it, so, but there has to be a continuity in the, in the, in the communication and it should promise what is possible. So these are the two authors. Uh, George and Berry, they have given these guidelines for advertising in the services sector. So follow these guidelines, you might find that uh, it might ha be helpful. The other guideline is that advertise to the employees also and that is a very important suggestion. Your communication should reach out to your employees. In the services sector, it is people who deliver, it is your employees who deliver the service. If the employees are not motivated, there is no point in, in, uh, in, 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 in doing so. So there are a lot of services which are employee related, real estate, consultancy, health care. They are all employee based services. If the doctors are not motivated, how can a hospital offer the service? So a lot of communication has to be targeted at employees. There could be some services which are equipment based, but fine, that is a, a different story about it. I would like to uh, now give one or two examples on, on communication and the media 
and the role of media in generating publicity. Many a time when you go look at uh, advertising, advertisements versus uh, publicity, you find that the publicity has much greater credibility. Many years ago, Konkan Railways came out with an advertisement. I just have a slide of it, part of it for you so that you can read it. And I'm focusing on the important part which you should read. It says Konkan Railways 10.5% tax-free bonds. That you make a, buy the bonds of Konkan Railways, you invest a fixed deposit kind of a thing in Konkan Railways and you get 10.5% uh, return. Now, it looks attractive that you need not to pay any tax. Your money, you have a money in your saving bank. How much interest you get in your saving bank? I think it's somewhere around 3.5%. And whatever interest you get, you have to pay tax on it, maybe 20% or 30% on it. If you go for a term deposit, like a fixed FD for six months, it, you might get 8% return. On that, you pay tax. So, you have to pay 5% Here, they say 10.5%, which is quite very attractive. So, you might get attracted towards it. Next day, in the newspaper, there was an article. And what newspaper? Economic Times. They had an article, Guidelines for Messing Up a Project. They run down the Konkan Railway project terribly. After reading, nobody invested in. You will not also invest in the Konkan Railways project. So, friends, the point I want to bring home is that the publicity had much greater believability than advertising. It has more credibility than advertising and therefore manage publicity. In the service sector, managing publicity is very important. This, uh, this is an example about, uh, again, uh, an example about Princess Diana. And the Princess Diana gave one interview. And next day, this is a cartoon which came. And uh, the entire uh, monarchy was shaken because every television channel carried on that interview, uh, where she talked about that she has no privacy in the palace. So the media has tremendous, tremendous power and never underestimate that. That's the point I have. We move to the next tool because we are uh, running short of time. So I'm going to be a little fast. And then when we look at sale promotions in the services sector, large number of sale promotions can be used. Free samples, contests, premiums, trade shows, uh, giveaways, coupons, so these are the various tools which are used in the services sector. And uh, typically uh, what is recommended in the services sector, uh, most services cannot give you sample. Uh, sampling may not be possible in the services sector. In some services, sampling may not be possible. For a car, it is possible to have a test drive. But for an airline to give you a test flight is not possible. So uh, if you want to travel to US and you say, look, give me a small test flight, I will take me over uh, uh, Noida and come back, and then I'll take a decision. No, it, that is not possible. So sampling many a times is not possible. So I put a cross there. Coupons are possible. In the services, coupons can be given and coupons can really go, but they are not used. The suggestion here is use coupons to the extent possible. Refund or future discounts, that uh, is not possible in many services, but uh, you, can, you should do. Premiums, yes and no. Uh, to give tangible clues, you can always give premiums uh, to, uh, to the people. Uh, for example, you go to a hotel, you check in time inside the room. Uh, it's not part of the package, but you find there is a big flower, uh, fruit basket which has been kept for you and it is written with compliments from the management of the hotel. And you find that this fruit basket is good enough, big enough, 
and uh, you find that they, they really care for you. Uh, many a times when you reach during odd times, uh, fruit basket people really appreciate and welcome. Uh, I remember if I check into a hotel at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, if the fruit basket is there, I feel very happy that, oh, there is something to eat. Price and quantity promotions, again, yes and no, that to generate long-term commitment, you can give price-related discounts uh, or run promotions. Price promotions, again, yes and no, to create involvement or excitement. So friends, some of these uh, tools are frequently used in the, in the services sector. But more importantly, I think in the services sector, the suggestion is rather than looking at purely advertisements or sales promotions, think in terms of generating publicity and think in terms of generating publicity through a whole lot of media tool which, you are, which one can use. Okay, so here I would like to conclude. We have another three, four minutes, but if you have certain questions, please uh, ask your questions. Otherwise, uh, maybe the end. Yeah. We are waiting for the calls of the viewers who are watching us. And if they have any queries, of course, they can call us because, but uh, time with us is very less. Sir, I have a question. Please. A um, few days back, I was going through some of the uh, site of a company who used to sell used and unused cars. And the criteria for uh, they have put forward is that ki agar aap car kharite hai, to we give you EMI for three years. But uh, the buyer uh, has to put the sticker which is carrying a ma message over the car. So do you think it is a type of or a form of an integrated marketing, marketing exactly. communication? Uh, exactly. Because in somewhere they were saying, as I was reading about uh, this uh, message thing, that is advertising kind of thing, that uh, that message, that advertisement part will carry some message. If some time you are stuck in uh, traffic, people will look towards that ad which you are carrying okay. on your uh, car. Very good uh, point. You see, uh, today any space is not free. You have to pay for the money, pay for it. In fact, I had gone to some amusement park and they put the sticker on my, uh, you know, on my glass of my car. I was very unhappy with them and I told them you remove it and you clean the, uh, the glass. There should be no glue to it, otherwise you pay for it. I am not a kind of uh, free free medium for you to advertise. So, you know, uh, and they, they were quite surprised. I said, yes, I'm going to sue you in the court of law because you are, you are, you have spoiled my car and I'm not an advertising media for you. And they, they really removed that sticker from my car. Honestly speaking, with the example which you have given is a wonderful example which is really happening. It's not a hypothetical thing. Today, a lot of taxis in the city, a lot of autos in the city, they carry those stickers. Uh, all the Meru cabs, uh, 4343, 4343, or uh, any such uh, fleet owner, they find it that th that is the advertising revenue. So to rather than paying that money to the fleet owner, that money is given to you if you are buying a car, and uh, that is given as free uh, uh, EMI for three years. Yes, sir. So uh, that is the money. And the credibility of your personal car is higher than a cab. Exactly, sir. So but you have always been uh, setting very good examples with the practical and the theoretical part. Uh, you are always there uh, to give valuable inputs to this lecture. Thank you so very much, sir, for being with us in this lecture. Thank you once again. Mm -hmm.